And so, we begin this video on Rose Bay here on the south side of Port Orange, just south of Daytona Beach. And now standing along busy highway US-1. Actually, we just crossed the bridge right there. That's Rose Bay. We begin here before the driveway of Scoot Inn, formerly known as the Fairview Inn. This is the location, the former hideout to what society once called, or does call, the first female serial killer. Welcome to the hideout, the real life hideout of Eileen Warnos. This will set up the video. I have done so many filming locations about movies, fictional stories, but I have never done a filming location based on the real life true crime of a particular person. That is why I will want to set this up thoroughly and rightfully. This is where a real life serial killer hit out during the murder of seven victims. You might know the story, but welcome to the filming locations of Monster. 2003, starring Charlize Theron as Eileen Warnos and also co-starring Christina Ricci. And we will begin here in Port Orange. Chris the girl, my beautiful fiance, will be helping me today track down these filming locations. Bye bye. I am Tampa J. Again, this is Chris the Girl, and today we will be running down these locations, showing you the then versus now comparisons of the scenes that were made right here in Central Florida, beginning here in the Daytona, Port Orange area, and a majority of the time we will go to Orlando and Kissimmee. Now I want to set all of this up properly. This movie was filmed based on a real life true crime story and it does have very, very, very emotional and graphic um, scenes and I just want to put that uh, out there if that's not your thing or if this might trigger uh, something, especially you don't want the young kids watching this movie. I haven't done a movie, uh, a filming locations video like this before. It does pertain to a true crime story. So I just want to put that out up front. Um, we know that. We are simply documenting the locations of the movie that was made of the true crime story. That being said, I've been doing a ton of research about the life of Eileen Warnos. So has Chris the girl. She's gonna help me out today. And that has helped us find some of these locations because unlike any other movie I have done before, actually there's not a ton of like this out there, this movie was filmed in some of the real life locations. Oh, busy highway. Right here, highway one. This is the stomping ground of Eileen Warnos, the first American female serial killer as society and the media proclaimed she was back then. So, welcome to the filming locations. We begin here at the real life hideout of Monster. There's much ahead. And right there, room number eight. Now the movie was not filmed here. They filmed the motel scenes elsewhere in Kissimmee. We'll get there when we get there. But I just want to point out, there is the real life room that Eileen Warnos was staying. And if you remember the movie, there were several scenes of her and Selby inside the motel. Now fictionally, that would have been here. But this is the real life location. 5812 South Ridgewood Avenue, AKA Highway 1. Welcome to the real life hangout of Eileen Warnos, just a couple blocks away from the motel. This is where they actually filmed the movie. The end scene when she's arrested, and in real life, Eileen Warnos was arrested right here at the Last Resort Bar. And we have now crossed the street approaching the Last Resort Bar. Chris was saying that the real life story, Eileen Warnos was actually arrested just before the stairs. We'll get there eventually, but in the movie, she was arrested over on that side. And uh, fun fact, the man who puts her in handcuffs is Kane Hodder, Jason Voorhees himself, 
Kane Hodder was in this movie. He's one of the undercover cops that arrests Eileen Warnos. And this screenshot here, more of an establishing shot for the first time you see the bar in the movie. You can just barely make out the brick to the right and the bikers along the sidewalk and the motorcycles. Notice the open sign is there. There is a Budweiser sign there, a Bud Light today. But this is it. This is, this is quite amazing to be standing here. Okay, so we're gonna go inside the bar and explore the bar, show you some screenshots, uh, talk to the people inside. There is a very good chance that some of the people uh, may have worked here back in the day when they were filming the movie and possibly way back 30-something uh, years ago when Eileen was here. So I just wanna, I wanna let you know that, again, this is a real-life location. So here we go. So we walk in the bar and they're playing the movie right there. Wow, that's amazing. And right here in the front south corner of the last resort, this is where Eileen, uh, Charlize Theron in the movie, was uh, playing the jukebox. There is a jukebox here today, very modern compared to the old one you see in the movie, but it is in the same spot. Let me get the best angle so I can match up the screenshot. Okay, so this was filmed 20 years ago, 20 odd something years ago. Notice the window down here, specifically like this tan kind of trim. That is right here still. And the box would have been protruding out, the old jukebox, but Charlie's there on right there. That's pretty, that's pretty sick, man. I'll put the, uh, the screenshot in the lower right hand corner so you can do the then and now comparison. Also, that American flag painting right there, oh, you can make that out. That was here back then too. Check this out, right there to the lower right, just uh, in front of Charlize there, in front of her right hand, you see that uh, Star Spangled Banner? It's right there. So there you go, that just confirms more. Yeah, this is uh, the hooker that used to hang out in. She never took anybody from here because this is where she hung out. Never killed nobody from here. Seven guys that we know of she killed. I didn't know her, but my name would be on that list. I see, it's got all her victims on there to the left. Yep. There's some stuff down here. Yep. Look at that. This place is haunted too. I've heard that. Yeah. That's why I got this. She knocked my beer over twice. Oh, okay. I see what she got there. Wow. She knocked my beer over twice. I mean, I did it like 20, 30. Right, right. <laughs> All right, here we are back in the bar. Playing the movie. Right yeah, we saw that when we walked right here, in. Right here, right here oh yeah, so that's Bruce Dern. The last resort, right here. They're standing, yeah, they're sitting right here. Yeah. That's the last resort bar right there. Sean Lee Stern. Oh yeah. The movie actress. Yeah, yeah she, in the bar. All in the blue. The third of the movie was filmed here. Yeah, that's that's the guy we first saw when we yeah. got here. He's yeah. in the movie. He's okay. In the movie. Eileen's last beer. Yep. It was right here. I don't remember this part of the movie. That guy looks familiar though. And here you go. We've got Selby and Aline sitting right here at the corner bar. Notice the window behind them and the bar itself. And that's where she was sitting, Charlize Theron. Yeah, the guy was showing us pictures of Charlize over there. We were just showing you of her coming in the bar and also Patty Jenkins, uh, the director. Uh, the time of them filming. They spent a lot of time inside of here. And the guy that we first met, oh look, there's there's another scene at the bar. We'll show you where that is in a second. But the guy that we first uh, were greeted by, uh, he was actually here and in the movie. Don't worry, I'll figure this out. I got this, I got this. And this spot right here is when Eileen's friend Thomas, played by Bruce Dern, I remember him from the Burbs. They were sitting here having a chat. Actually, he's standing right here in front of the door. Check this out. Notice the bar. It's kind of hard to see, it's a little shadowy. But right there's the spot. If that door was shut, you would be able to see the last resort right there. It's the same, it's been covered up, but it's right there, the last resort. You can see the T-H-E right there behind Bruce. Thomas, check that out. That's freaking sick. And Kane Hodder right here, Jason Voorhees, 
as an undercover cop and also that guy to the right he's an undercover detective notice the door behind them leading straight out to the side of the bar i'm leaning up against the bar kind of where uh kane's forearm is there i've got my back against it here you go here's the spot and that's how uh in the next scenes you would see them out back and that's where a majority of the people are right now they're out back and now i've stepped outside right here on the side of the last resort all these bricks uh have been painted and right here in this little window this is where the payphone was and notice it says daddy o right here check this out here's the screenshot charlie's theron lee just hung up the phone there and she walks back into the bar and you can make out all these bricks today then and now it's pretty incredible look at this daddy o right there the door to the right she would have been standing right there heading back in, into the bar after she made that phone call. Is Eileen's brick on there? Can you see that? In so, I don't know if you can see this in the movie, but it does say Eileen Lee Warnos, and I saw a documentary where someone specifically pointed this one out, and they said that was Lee's brick. That that was, that was hers. After closely examining the screenshot, those bricks weren't painted that back during the time of the movie. There's one that says Toe and Dan next to Daddy-O there. But someone uh, painted those bricks right there for Lee. Eileen Lee Warnos. And there you go. And also again, over here, the shrine to the right of the door. And something cool that someone pointed out, there's a sign out here that was taken from the Fairview Motel, the former name of the Scoot Inn. And there you go. There's actually some bullet holes in that sign. I see them. But there is the former, uh, the former name of the motel of Lee's Hideaway, the Fairview Motel. And it's pointing the right direction. It's, it's right down there. We didn't come too far. That's, that's pretty amazing to see. And there's a couple here, fans of the movie also. They're going to go back behind the bar and get their picture taken with, with the pole there. And this gentleman has worked here for 40 years, and he is one of the bartenders in the movie. Notice their t-shirts. Your name should be black. Yeah? Change your name. Why is that? Oh, queen of, queen of the effing universe, yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> and the very end of the movie right there, on the far side of the bar. Check that out. And a fun fact, Hank Williams Jr., the country singer, used to come in here and hang out and actually wrote a song about the last resort. And they are definitely embracing the fact that Eileen Warnos once hung out here. There's a shrine out back. Um, a couple of people that are out back today. Uh, the owner, of course, knew uh, Lee as they called her. So we are among uh, a real life location and the real life people. So you're, you're right there where Christina Ricci and um, Charlize Theron were sitting having the beers the first time they came to the bar together. Yep. What's it feel like to be here knowing what you know about Eileen Warnos and the movie? Uh, it is surreal. It is very surreal to know that she walked around here. She was arrested literally right outside the door where we are now. And um, this was one of the one of the very, 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 very few places in her life where she felt safe. Yeah. And and happy. And this is this is it. Yep. So this was her family. And I saw this tucked away over in the corner, on the north corner of the bar, the actual monster poster from the movie. So before the time of them actually making the movie, Charlize Theron, who is in the picture right here, and Patty Jenkins came down to the bar to get a feel of what it was like. And here's a picture of Charlize playing pool here. And here's a shot of Aline when they first come in the door right here. Notice the pool table to the right. It's not in the same position, but I want to point out that that is the same pool table in the movie. This is the screen used. That's insane. Look at that right there. You can definitely see this portion right here where the balls are. Right there. There you go, dead center. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Wow. Monster 2003. And that's their uh, their motto here, their slogan. Ice cold beer and killer women. Daytona USA. There you go. And this is a dive. This is the back of the bar here. There's actually a bar out this way. Here are the restrooms. 
the men and women's room right outside to the left. Also, there's a hearse down here. And check it out, it's got a Ghostbusters logo. Ha <laughs> ha, you got a call. Look at that, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, look at this. All right, haunts on. Undertaker. There's one coffin here, look at that, isn't that creepy? And there's one coffin here. As you were saying, this place probably rocks on Halloween. Oh, I bet it does, I bet it does. Oh, wow, look at the bones. That could be uh, someone's victim, could be. And the age of this door right here, for sure, the real life Lee would have touched that door. Just think about stuff like that. That's the stuff that I think about when I'm on location. Tampa J right there, Chris the girl. Right there. <laughs> we signed the exit sign. How's that feel? Yeah, very cool. There you go. Okay, walking outside of the bar. Now, this is where she was actually arrested. This spot right here, the steps. But right out here, I'll show you in a second. I'll match up the screenshots. They did a little differently in the movie. Just before the detectives bring her out, you see the establishing shot. Actually, it's more, more right here. They come down the steps and about right here, we're actually right there is where they make the arrest. That's where she gets arrested. Kane Hodder would be putting the handcuffs on Chris the girl. If you were Lee, I'll break it down for you. And right here, coming out of the door, Eileen and the two undercover police officers, they basically tricked her to come outside. Little did she know she was about to get apprehended. But right there again, Kane Hodder in front of the last resort door, which you can still make out. Some of that same design, the V and the flames, that spot right here, also the rafters, the steps. I'll put a, the screenshot in the lower right hand corner. Also the brick, everything the same. And then they come down here. In the movie, they make it seem like the bikes could park right there, but in reality, that's US Highway 1. They made it seem like a parking lot, but I'm standing where the camera is, or was, recreating the same angle. Check it out down the sidewalk here. There you go, then and now. Check out the screenshot. Wow, exactly the same. And here she is at the end of the sidewalk. This is when Kane puts the cuffs on her. Notice right before their feet there, that long rectangle there before the driveway. Look at this, it's right here. They were literally right there. We'll go back so you can see the shot. Check it out. Even the stretch of grass to the lower right hand side by the motorcycles. Right there, check it out, that's awesome. Yep, Eileen Mornos, fictionally arrested right here in this spot, but actually arrested right there at the doorsteps. And you said there was a police car, you saw this documentary, and they took her off and put her in the police car there. In the movie, the police car was parked right here. There's a screenshot of you seeing the cop car pull up right after they arrest her. And there you go, step back, that police car, that sheriff car, Right here, you can make out the wall, the last resort, everything. Then and now. Wow, incredible. Monster. Amazing. And the back side of the front door there. One last look at the last resort. Before we head to the next filming location, there's still much ahead. And right here, again, this is where they actually brought Aline Warnos to the vehicle, to the police car, before they took her to jail. Back in 1991 is when that actually happened. And right here for this filming location, we come to Pitt Road, right in front of the Welcome to Daytona Beach, the iconic sign. Welcome to Daytona. This is an establishing shot. It lets the viewers know that the movie is taking place in Daytona Beach. This walkway leads to the International Speedway. And as you can see, it, it has not changed much at all. It's a busy street here. There you go, wait for it. There you go. Then, and now. All right, Daytona 500 happening, I believe, in about a week out here, things are about to get crazy. 
Wish to see that one day. I've been in the Indy 500, but never the Daytona 500. Have been out in that racetrack before though. Did the museum tour back in 1993. My family's first trip ever to Florida. First beach I ever stepped foot on was Daytona Beach. Fun facts for you here. And for the next few filming locations, we come to Kissimmee here on the south side of Orlando. I spent a lot of time here as a kid. I spent a lot of time here now. And Chris the girl grew up in Kissimmee. She went to school here. And welcome to East Kissimmee, Neptune Road, actually St. Cloud, not too far that way. Imagine this car being a Pontiac Grand Am. This is where Selby took the right, right here on the former road, not there anymore. It is now a dead end cul-de-sac here, but there used to be a road. If you remember the scene, she takes a right too late hits the ditch and wrecks the car in the front yard of this house. And I've got the screenshot down there in the lower right so you can make out where the road used to be. This shot from the movie was from the car shooting out as she was taking that quick right onto the former road. You can make out the house in the background then and now. And in this screenshot you can make out that house to the right of uh, Christina Ricci's arm and that window, check it out. There is that house today. The house, the green one to the right was not there when they were filming the movie 20 years ago, but paused it just right so you can see. Uh, just to confirm the location, this is across the street from the yard. Now furthering up the former road, they took the right and the car kind of bounced up on this embankment. It was a little steeper then and then it rolled its way over here in front of the house, actually in, in this spot right before the driveway. And looking back at the road to show you Neptune Road and the former road coming this way towards me now to the red signs where the cul-de-sac is now. You can definitely make out the ditch to the right which would have, been, would have been below the former stop sign. That is where the car went off of the road right there. Right there in that spot, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, check it out, shot for shot. Driveway, the building to the left, the house, it all matches up. And this is right when they land in the yard. Actually, this fence post right here, hold on, check this out. That fence post is in this screenshot. I believe it's right there, just above the steering wheel. It looks like there was like uh, some sort of a blue jay on top of it. Whoa, that's amazing. Yeah, that was right there, that post. Check that out. And here is the lady and the gentleman coming out of the house to see what had happened. These two young girls uh, coming together in the front yard, the, the Pontiac Grand Am to the right. Fun fact, they actually filmed inside of that house for the scene later when they're questioning this couple about uh, seeing uh, Eileen and Selby trying to figure out what was going on, the investigators. I don't want to get into their yard, I don't want to trespass here, but right here, that spot, I'm shooting from the side of this road. That's where the car landed. That's where the girls came to, out in this vicinity. And there's a shot looking back this way. And you can make out, you can make out the background then and now today, especially the trees. There's like a white, a very white building out there, very long, and of course, you can see that it's Florida, you can see a cattle pasture. And one of the most important filming locations of the entire movie, the former location of the Little Diamond Motel, rest in peace, it used to sit here at 2385. This is where they filmed the motel scenes where Lee and Shelby, or Selby, were hiding out. Um, this was the former entrance to the driveway, now a Dunkin' Donuts, a shopping plaza. This is the Fairview uh, Inn. This was the fictional one that we saw back in Port Orange. And also, coincidentally, you went to preschool right there. Right there. You had no idea until we got here. You're like, that's it. That's where I went to preschool. I'm like, well, they filmed a movie next door. Yeah, I don't remember the motel. You remember the sign? It was very iconic, or distinctive. I don't even know. Yeah. I was, it was preschool. I was young. Very, very young. So. You were a little monster. I was, yeah. I was. <laughs> and they were filming Monster yeah, right, right here. Next door. Probably years later, though. Many years later, yes. I pulled this up on Google Maps. This is the former sign, as you see in the movie. Check out the storm grate right down here. 
to the lower left side. That is actually still there. So that confirms the old entryway to the little diamond motel that you saw uh, Lee and Selby take a right into the movie, into the driveway, and back to the motel. It kind of sat back there more so. It would have been behind the present day Dunkin' Donuts. So right here at the corner of Orange Blossom and Washington, right there, the love of my life, Went to preschool, that's amazing. I sure did, yeah. I went there for one year, if I'm not mistaken. And then I went to preschool at my church. But yeah, back, back in my day, it used to be called Shady Oaks. And now it's owned by a different company. But that that's it, that's where I went to to preschool. Right here in Kissimmee, next, right here. next to the filming location. Yeah, go figure. The only thing that hasn't changed is obviously the road the former driveway and I believe this oak tree you will see in this screenshot below all the way to the right check that out down to the right see the oak tree in the far corner lying it up now that oak tree was in the in this shot this is the uh, widest angle you see of the little diamond motel so the motel yeah maybe sat like right right there back there you can see from the screenshot so there you go, then and now, was able to do that a little bit. The driveway is still the same, in the same location. And that oak tree was definitely there 20 years ago. So that's really cool. But yeah, it's gone. And on our way towards Orlando, still technically in Kissimmee, right up there, that overpass, passing over John Young Parkway, that's the road we're standing on. That is the location of the opening shot of the movie where Eileen is sitting under the overpass and you see the words monster, the title up here. She's sitting up there on the right. I am now on the opposite side of the overpass walking up to the spot where Charlize Theron was sitting. This is all new, this portion of the overpass right here. It was the former overpass and kind of embankment she was sitting on, but the vicinity is obviously the same. Climbing up on the side here, Whoa, watch your step. Woo! Chris the girl back in the car, down that way. All right, you have to use your imagination. I'll put the screenshot into play. Right there, the title monster, Charlize Theron, Lee Warnos, on the right. They, they... Loud car. <laughs> so the overpass right there has been added and this has changed a lot underneath here. But this is where they filmed it. And then a shot of her face. The camera looking back up at her like this, right here in this area. Great performance by Charlize Theron. She killed it. Uh, Ebert of Siskel and Ebert said that this was the greatest performance, one of the best acting performances of our lifetime, and I agree with that. So cool. He really felt the movie. Being here in this spot right now, the emotion buildup you see in this scene, right here kicking off in the movie. Wow, I got goosebumps on my goosebumps. Also, drop my glasses. They rolled right there, they stopped right there. Alright, back to the car. Chris the girl's uh, waiting on, waiting for me right there. And for this next location, very easy to find because if you look right here on this sign, Central Park Self Storage. That is the actual name of the real life storage unit where this next scene was filmed. Central Park Self Storage. Back on Orange Blossom Trail, now a little further up though from Kissimmee, we're heading towards Orlando, down at the end of this driveway, right here, and it might look familiar to you, we'll get there in a second, but right here is the Central Park Self Storage where Eileen had her storage unit. All right, I have the shot into frame right here. You can make out then and now this same entrance, specifically the office to the left, the gate, now a different gate, the Central Park sign, and the trunk of this tree over here, keep that in mind. Look at this, different angle. There's that tree, and there's the entryway. That's where Eileen uh, sneaks into the gate to her storage unit. 
And oddly enough, I just witnessed what appeared to be a homeless lady uh, do the same thing as she did in the movie. I, I believe they're, they are still renting, uh, in real life, renting these storage units out to people um, on the street. Actually, she's going to about the same spot. Just real life stuff going on right now. That's what's happening as I'm documenting this filming location. There you go. I'm pulling the shot in tighter to do a uh, then and now. I'll put the uh, screenshot in the lower right. Definitely make out the, uh, the old Central Park self-storage sign. That is the same sign, just different today. This is where she uh, went right through the gate and to the left, a couple doors down. Yeah, I'm gonna hang back for a minute. I dropped Chris the girl off at Universal Studios, not too far from here, so she could make, uh, make another video. So she'll be hanging out with us later though. She'll be meeting up for some more monster filming locations. Just waiting here a second. A lot of, a lot of trash on the ground here. All right, I decided to cut bait and keep moving. I've been sitting here for 20 minutes hoping that I could somehow get back there. However, the person is still there um, working out of the storage unit. So, but this is the spot right there to the left, Eileen's storage unit. That's where she kept all of her stuff. And for the next several filming locations, we come to downtown Orlando. And the wind has picked up. Wow, very windy day here. Downtown Orlando walking up to the next location. 150 East Robinson here in downtown. This is a brand new building. This was different, but this is the vicinity along the curb here. Charlize Theron walking down the sidewalk after interviewing at one of the lawyer's offices right here to the left. This is the spot where she gets picked up by the police officer and I'm about in the same vicinity. The way I found this spot was because of the FedEx on the corner. You can make out the old FedEx Kinko sign in the background. And that's how it led me here to downtown Orlando. There you go, the screenshot into frame again. Notice the curb, the street right behind Eileen there. Again, the law office with the 120 and the Kinkos down the street in that building. The cop car pulling up right behind her, landing right here at this curb. These windows here in the background, I'll, I'll put the picture into frame there in the bottom right, and you can use your imagination. You can make out this building here. Gonna get off the curb here. Car was parked right here in the street. This is where the police officer put her in the back of the car and then drove down the street, actually went around the block to the next location to the parking garage. Also want to point out that behind the police car and the police officer here, you can see the corner right there. The building behind there, the windows especially. Here's that building today, just to show you. And again, the FedEx, still a FedEx today. Remember Kinko's? You can see that behind him as well. And as she's talking to the police officer there, you get the reverse angle, as you can see, all this behind Charlize there is all gone. It's called the view at Lake Eola. Lake Eola, right there. Right there, the corner of the block. I'll get there in a second, but I want to point out that the former parking garage that they pull into, just to give you the full uh, filming location, right here on Jefferson was to the right. It has been torn down. It is an empty lot, but the police officer would have pulled off into the garage right there. That's where we're going. You can make out this building in a few moments in one of the screenshots I will share with you. And right here, it would have been against this building. This building you can also make out in the shot, but this is the parking garage where the police officer takes Eileen. She would have been right here and pulled that uh, newspaper out of the trash bin. And that's this is the spot where she realizes she's off the hook for the first murder, that they have no leads. She picks that newspaper out of the trash bin about right here in this vicinity and here's the screenshot just to show you notice the building all the way out to the left the brick road beneath the police car beneath the tire that's jefferson check out the curb near the trash can and the former parking garage right behind eileen there here you go today yeah this is this is the location of that scene inside that parking garage the former parking garage 
Yeah, that's pretty crazy. All right, so you see these wires like hanging right there? You can definitely make that out in the shot right above the sirens there, the lights of the police car. Check that out, that's pretty cool. And again, the building off to the left, right there and there. And because of the brick right here and just closely examining the brick to the left of the ground, there's a, there's a, a small half brick right here, I got my finger on it, and these two, I pinpointed that on the screenshot, which is just slightly behind, actually, right there is where she was standing. I know because I matched up the brick. So the trash bin was right here in this vicinity. Right here, on the corner. Charlie's the road. Police car coming out behind her into the brick street. Taking a left on Jefferson. She picks up the newspaper out of the trash bin right here. Parking garage, gone. And the law office over there on the corner was behind the church and you can actually make out the roof of this church as the police officer is bringing her over this way to the former parking garage. You can make that roof, that tile specifically, out of the back glass of the police car behind Eileen there. Yep, you can definitely identify them. Yeah, so they actually did take the route and come this way into the former parking garage. There's someone flying a kite out there right now. It's pretty cool. This is where that scene went down. They filmed it right inside that garage, right here on Jefferson. That is I-4, by the way. Left to Tampa, right to Daytona. Cool mural on that building there as we're turning left onto Amelia Street, just right up the street here on the north side of downtown. This is our next filming location, a very important one too. And right here at 1040 Amelia Street, this building to the right, this one, that alleyway, this is perhaps one of the greatest filming locations as far as acting I've ever been to. This is a hidden gem right here, my friends. The scene that took place right there against that wall in that alleyway, Eileen and Selby. This is where Eileen puts Selby on the bus and sends her back home. One of the most emotional experiences on the big screen I've ever witnessed, and it happened right here in, in the building. Right there, the bus station looks the same. All of this, not much has changed. You can actually make out the railroad crossing signs in the screenshot, but the bus would have pulled up right there in front of the bus station and they had that conversation right there. I'm gonna break that down for you. But I just wanted to show you right here on the north side of downtown. This is where Charlize Theron, perhaps, this performance right here in this alleyway, that's what won her that Oscar. The whole movie entirely, of course, everything was great, but this scene right here, it, it really hits you hard when she breaks down. It stinks, there's a gate here now, but right here, on the corner, actually, her arm would have been like right here, but this is where that scene went down. You can make out Eileen coming around the corner, this exact corner here. There's uh, some bricks protruding out of the stucco there. You can see where they patched that spot today. Let me get a little closer and obviously you can make out this building right there to the left. See this right here? That's where those bricks were sticking out. They've, they've patched the building. Christina Ricci would have been sitting right here on the right side. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Okay, right here in this spot, there's a little crack behind the gate. That is where Charlize and Christina Ricci were sitting. That's where that scene went down. That's amazing. Let's see if I can put my camera up here for you. Right there. And right here, specifically right here, is where Lee puts Selby on the bus. And it takes off. And then she turns around and walks this way, past the bus station, up the sidewalk. And this has not changed the front side. You can make out the windows. Yeah, look at this. This window right here has been blocked in by this sign, but that door 
is the same and the windows. Look at this. So awesome. I was really looking forward to checking this location out. Also, you can make out 1036. That is the actual address of the bus station. You can actually make that out in the screenshot. See that? 1036. 1036. Same set of numbers right there. 1036. Show these on. Eileen Warnos, right up the sidewalk. And when the moment hits her again right here after Selby gets on the bus, notice to the right, you can make out indentations on the brick. Right there, specifically that one in the middle, that is right here. You can make out these in indentations in this shot behind her there. Check this out. She was standing right here before the window. That's pretty rad. Right here is where she stops and looks back at the bus taking off. And there you go, the bus taking off. You can see the intersection ahead, the buildings to the left across the street, the light pole to the right, and the sidewalk. It all matches up very well. Love that stuff. All right, then and now, the bus stop a monster and for the next location we come to the magic molly mall here on colonial now this was not seen in the actual movie i found a set shot i can only guess this was perhaps a deleted scene or something but from this shot that i saw on the internet the cast and crew out here and charlie's Eileen getting out of that first victim's car. Oh, a little loud out here at the Magic Ball. Right there, as you see in the shot, she's wearing the hat and the jumpsuit and getting out of the car of the first victim. So they definitely shot something out here. Don't recall seeing the Magic Mall in the movie, but I was able to find the Magic Mall uh, very quickly. We have one of these over in Tampa. And for the next filming location, we come before this roller rink, Cimarron Skateway, 2670 Castle Creek Boulevard. This is the skating rink where Selby and Eileen had their first date. Yeah, it's a busy parking lot right here. I'm going to put a screenshot into frame to show you that right here on the ledge, that is where Christina Ricci was sitting waiting for Eileen to pick her up right there on that spot. And here you go today, approaching. Move a little closer and put that back into frame for you. That has not changed right here before the main door of the skating rink. And it does say roller skating, although it's a, it's a different font today. It does say it to the left and to the right there above the uh, pole she's leaning up against. Yeah, right here. You can make out the rocks below where she's sitting, where she was, right here before the door, Christina Ricci. And check it out, inside the skating rink. And I can already tell you, it was filmed in here. Wow. All right, I have to set this up very carefully. There's a lot of people in here, but this is the first shot you see of the skating rink. Notice the brick right here? This right here is still here. And obviously the skating rink, check it out. Slowly, right there. This is where the scene was filmed. Look at that. Yeah, this all matches up. The carpet's changed out, but the brick, the trash can, all of that, that's all still here. And of course, this actual skating rink. And there's that trash can there. You see the bottom right? Here it is. All right, so here we are. I've located, pinpointed the scenes. I'm gonna try to point this out carefully. As you can see, it's bumping. So I came in the main door, which is down that way, but the door that Selby or Eileen enters is actually the back door over here where the lockers are. Actually, that door right there is where she first comes in to the skating rink. And right here before me, the table where Selby and Eileen were sitting. 
This is the same spot. Now come across the way. Over there is where they were sitting in the booth. If you look right out here, you can make out the DJ booth. I've got a shot. They breeze right by this area right here on skates. And right behind me, there's quite a few people over here in the corner, but right behind me is this door and these lockers. This is the spot over here in the back corner is where she came in to the skating rink and Selby was skating up to her. And just to show you, I'll put the shot down to the right. Now it'll be a different camera angle, but that is where, not the same lockers, but the former lockers. And there's that door where she entered the skating rink. I am remembering the roller cave on the east side of Indianapolis. That was my roller rink when I was a kid. The roller cave, man, I miss it. And doing the hokey pokey. <laughs> this is awesome. And check this out, the railing and the brick behind Christina. I'm standing in about the same spot. They've, they've blacked out the brick though. Check it out. And there you have it. The roller rink from Monster. Sitting on the exact spot that Selby was sitting, Christina Ricci. Okay, now it's time to go uh, back and pick up my beautiful fiance at Universal Studios. And will you looky there, picking her up at Universal Studios. How was Mardi Gras? Good, good, I got something for you. You got something for me, okay. All right. Hello there. Hello there. Good to see you again, Tampa J. Good to see you again, Chris the girl. Yeah, did you have fun? Yeah, I did. Accomplish a lot? We got it all, we got one more spot okay. to hit though. One and one you spot. can actually see it right there. Oh, okay. Fun spot. Literally right there. How was Mardi Gras? It was fun. Yeah. It's cool. I've never seen it before. So. Macaroons. All yeah. right. Happy Mardi Gras. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I only ate half of them. I was drained <laughs> myself. Well, you left me more of the yellow there. I'll have some of the green and some of the yellow. And don't get cheap on me. It's cousin Eddie. Vegas vacation. Now look at that coaster. Yeah. What a fun spot. And that's right, just uh, across the way from Universal Studios Florida, Fun Spot America right here on International Drive. This is the filming location of when Selby comes to have fun with her friends and Eileen comes as well. She's kind of in the background at first, uh, you know, watching uh, Selby have fun with her friends and then they eventually ride the Ferris wheel and I believe all that stuff is still here. And we have made it through security. We don't have to pay to come inside because everything's pretty much a la carte inside a fun spot. That's how I like it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Check out this map. You are here so I have already pinpointed where the scene was filmed out here at Fun Spot. It is all the way at the back. The arcade snack bar the bumper cars, the go-karts up here, and the revolver all in the movie. This is the vicinity where the scenes were filmed. So we're heading back here just to show you the filming location. Classic scrambler alert. Look at that, just like we saw at the Florida State Fair a few days ago. Here we are back on our filming locations date. I wanna point out that both of us filmed filming locations videos in Daytona this weekend. It will be your first filming locations video. Yep. Ever. First one, first one ever. And I won't spoil it because I don't know when it's gonna come out, but we did this together. This weekend was a filming locations project, Chris the Girl and I. So go check out her channel, subscribe to Chris the Girl. There will be a link in the description below and check out her video. I Much ahead. It. Thank You're you. welcome. The wind just picked up there. Did you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Now on the second story balcony of the arcade, I came up to take a look at the Fun Spot Ferris wheel. Not the same one they used in the movie, but very uh, cool to think that it was once here. You can definitely make out that the buckets are different in several of the shots. I do have a behind the scenes uh, set shot of them filming them in the buckets out here and you can definitely see that the bucket they're sitting in is a whole lot different. So right here on the west side of the arcade, this ticket booth where it says passes and tickets, this is where you see Charlize Theron pay for her ticket. And this all still looks the same. Check this out. I'm gonna put the screenshot into frame. Look at that. 
That's the same counter and everything. That's pretty cool. That's where she purchased her ticket and then walks out this way towards present day awning. And I believe there was a carousel, used to sit a carousel right out here. Yeah, check this out. She's got that heater in her mouth there. Look at the yellow beam out behind that guy, that dude behind her. And again, the ticket booth, the window, right here. There you go, I'll put it down in the right hand corner. That's right here, pretty sick. And Christina Ricci Selby right there in front of her. I'm standing in about the same spot. Notice the ticket booth in the background again in the center and the door over to the left. Here you are, walking this way. And it looks like, oh, check this out. The bumper cars were right there during the movie as well. You can make out the exit sign to the right. Here, I'll come over this way. Oh, there you go. I'll hone it in right there. That's a better, that's a better screen grab. Check that out. See the exit sign? Right here. Pretty gnarly, bro. Yeah, bumper cars and then the Ferris wheel over there. I'm gonna say that that is the same location the Ferris wheel has always been, even though it's a different different Ferris wheel. Another screen grab for you. You can make out more of the bumper car track to the right. That awning, this little building here, right there, that is still here. Check this out. Right up in there, Chris right there. She was standing right here. Actually, she's you're walking the same path. And stop right, right about, yeah, perfect. You did that perfect. I'm gonna put the shot down here. You stay right there. There you go. Got it. Nailed it, Chris the girl, thank you. You see how this used to be like a blue and white checkered floor, kind of like my, uh, my Spicoli's down there? Well, you can still make out the pattern. Still make it out. It, just use your imagination. But so this ride you see right here, I don't know if it's still here, but it's definitely not here in this spot. This is where Selby sees her friends. If you notice to the left, right there it says the commander. That is the name of the go-karts. And check this out. You can still make out the commander, that location. So that ride, wherever it is now, it used to sit right here. And to the right of me, to these picnic tables back by the Fun Spot Arcade right here is where the Ferris wheel used to sit. And this is where Charlize Theron, not vocally saying it, but you're hearing her uh, narrate one of the most famous parts of the movie when she's talking about life. And uh, you know, she doesn't believe in circumstances. It's a very, very powerful moment right here as she's reflecting, watching um, the love of her life. She's realizing in this very moment that she's in love and she would do anything for Selby. All right, so check it out. I found the next spot. The go-karts that Irene is driving, the go-kart track, is not the commander. It's actually the Thrasher. And check this out. The Thrasher, specifically this turn right here. This is where you see Charlize Theron take, just like this car right here, this is exactly what she does when you see her in the movie. And Selby was up here in this area by the Ferris wheel and she was waving her to come over and ride the Ferris wheel with her. She was waving out. So this matches up perfectly. I'll throw the screenshot in there for you, of course. Okay, this is amazing. That is exact right there. Check it out. She's coming around the corner here. You can make out the pylon of the upper deck of the track. Right there, she takes it to the corner just like that. Then and now, right here, the Thrasher. This is the one she was racing around. There are three go-kart tracks out here, by the way, three. And a couple cool things going on here in this screenshot. We'll start with the railing. The railing is here. Check that out. Also, it says bumper boats. The bumper boats they're right there in front of the Ferris wheel. So Christina Ricci was actually watching right here. And that's that's the exact turn that she made. Wow. And check this out. These go-karts, different color. 
but they're the same. Look at the spoiler. This is pretty cool. This one of these go karts. I'm sure the the motor's been replaced, but could be the actual car. These are screen used. That's amazing. I'm going out on a limb, but I know for a fact that they just replaced the motor on these. So yeah, one of these cars was screen used. Because if you look at the spoiler, the fins here, the bodywork, everything matches up. That's the opposite angle. Welcome racers. Whoa. For your safety, please listen to the following rules. The gas pedals on the right and the brake pedals on the left. The seatbelt must be worn and adjusted tightly. You must keep both hands on the steering wheel at all times. Please secure all those clothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here you go. Charlize coming up the steps there towards the Ferris wheel. And notice the, the fence, the blue fence right here, especially where the fence kind of turns right there. This post specifically, you can see right above her head right there. And also, this is telling me, this is confirming even more that the ferris wheel this shot specifically i'll show you in a second it's showing me that it was changed out this is a different one because of this right here right there one of the four legs of the actual ferris wheel you can see that it is completely different than the one here today look it's kind of a round base there's something that goes off this way and this is one of the four legs. This would be the same vicinity, but as you can see, it has changed. So different. And there you go, just to show you, the buckets were more round. These are more square. And they were inside, actually they were inside a red bucket. And I know that from a, uh, a set shot, a behind the scenes of them filming this specific scene of them riding the Ferris wheel. Okay, so this has been moved up close to the front of the park. This is the entrance. This is the one you see behind Charlize Theron as she's uh, she's watching Selby. This is the same one and I matched it up just because of the pattern down below. I'll show you, get a little closer here. Right here, in front of my thumbnail, the lights and the molding, specifically right there. You see it right there in the center? Well, check this out, keep your, keep your mind on that. It's the same molding right there that is the same molding so yeah this is the same ferris wheel oh, i'm sorry carousel <laughs> that was uh over down on the other side of the park this is the one she would have been uh standing right in front of and not only did i find the right carousel i found the horse you see right behind her in this screenshot check this out you can make out the bull skull on the back side of the horse on the leg there it's right there. You gotta use your imagination. The horses are going, you know, going fast, going by behind her really fast in the movie. But this is the section you see right behind her. And I matched that pattern up right there. That's how I found it. And there you go. There was Fun Spot. Will be the last location here in the Orlando area. And there are a couple spots that I have searched relentlessly for. I'm talking about hours upon hours the last couple of weeks looking for this house in particular selby's house now i do know that maybe this was in sanford i do know maybe it was in orlando winter park kissimmee maybe daytona but i will tell you i searched down every street on google maps and i also uh know specifically yes i know specifically precisely the address the house number of this house is either 410 or 406 and i know that because the house to the right of it you can see on the mailbox is 408 so naturally it has to be one or the other if they didn't change the house numbers for the film but i do know the scenes were filmed on the inside and outside at this home there was a couple of scenes particularly uh every time you saw selby at home with her family um when lee first comes over the first night she sleeps uh in the back there's like a back like in-laws quarters that's where selby's room is that was all filmed here so if there's anyone watching that might know where this is and you're only going to know if you were there that day during the filming or you perhaps live in this house or or have uh, lived on this street that's that's the only way you're probably going to know where this specific 
house is. So, yeah, drop a comment if if you if you know anything about this house. I could not find this. I searched so much. This was the hardest thing I've ever searched for, and I could not find it. But hey, I'm not going to give up. And also, this house could be in those same areas as well. I know the house number for this one is 201, and they did film inside this house and outside. This is where this was the first house that they rented after leaving the motel and then eventually they would leave this house because they couldn't afford it and go back to the diamond uh, motel where you went to preschool yeah. <laughs> next to the filming locations you said that you were there probably 10 years before they made the movie yeah, probably 91 92 so during the time that basically Eileen Warnos Eileen Warnos was going through trial or yeah. being caught yeah you were in there Little did they know that they would be filming a movie about her next door to your preschool in Kissimmee. Yeah. That, that was a fun fact of the day right there. Yeah, who knew? I had no idea. Yeah. So if you know where those houses are, back to that, just let us know in the comment section. Searched so hard for that. Could not find it. Whoa. The wind picked up right there. And that's it. That's the filming locations to Monster. That's the wrong side. <laughs> That's the filming locations <laughs> to Monster. I hope you guys enjoyed my track starting out in Daytona, Port Orange, headed down to Kissimmee, went all the way through to downtown Orlando, Castleberry, and then back to Fun Spot. I had a great time tracking these locations down, doing the research, uh, dug, uh, dug deep into the movie, learned a lot about it, watched so many documentaries also about the life of Eileen Warnos, uh, the first uh, woman, one of the first, uh, as she was known as the first uh, woman si serial killer. Um, I just wanna, I wanna thank everyone for watching. Again, this was a different type of movie. Wow, woo, it's getting cold out here too. This was a different type of movie for me as far as filming locations to do. Uh, I wanted to approach this very carefully. We kind of talked about it before this. Uh, it dealing with real life situations and a real life story. And not, not the best of a story. I want to I wanna talk about Patty Jenkins, uh, the woman that created this movie, that wrote the screenplay and directed it. Uh, her first go at any movie. I think she eventually did uh, the Wonder Woman movie. Um, great job and uh, she got one heck of a cast involved in this movie and got Charlize Theron best actor and I, I heard her say this in an interview monster is not about a serial killer it's a love story about basically how society the environment you grow up in and what you deal with can transform you into a, a monster or in, in this case that was Lee, you know that society and everything you went through um, can transform you and make you and uh, sometimes the best things in your life uh, are not the same as everyone Joe Schmo you know normal people have that they look forward to and yeah so there's a there's a message it's a, it, it is a very violent movie um, because you know it's a violent situation but also it's a love story. So I just wanted to put that out there. It's a different type of movie. And again, you know, it might not be your cup of tea. You may have seen it. And if you're a fan of the movie or any of that stuff, if that's you, you know, I hope I, I hope you enjoyed it. So there you go. Also, um, just want to point out that we said this earlier. You made a video. Uh, the last couple days we shot this in two days. I don't know if you, uh, you probably picked that up. But uh, normally I film a couple videos, maybe two to three on the weekend. This weekend I only focused on this video, it being spread out um, throughout Florida. So go check out uh, Chris the Girl again, check out her video. And uh, I just want to thank you all for watching. If you like filming locations and you want to see more of my filming locations videos, uh, please check out the main page of my YouTube channel. There's a filming locations playlist. and. As I always say, there's much ahead. This video is over. Thanks for watching. And as I always say at, at the end of my videos, um, know you're awesome, know you're loved, 
And no matter who you are, what you're going through, what you've been through, I believe in my heart there is always much ahead for you. Meaning, you have tomorrow, you know. As long as you uh, wake up, you know, that's, that's the thing. But you always have a second chance. So make it count. And tell the people you love, you love them. Always. That's it. We're in the video. Anything you want to add? I... Just thank you for having me along. It's an honor to be a part of your filming location videos, and especially this one. As you said, we put a lot of effort and research into this uh, collectively and separately, so yeah. it's really cool to do this particular one together. So. Well, well I the honor's all mine and thank you for the help and I had so much fun running down these yeah, and getting so. to show you, you know, what I do out when I, you know, normally fly out of the state and uh, do this. So I'm I'm glad I could be a part of her first yeah. filming locations video as well. So go check that out. So there you go. That's it. The wind's blowing. Yep. We're going home. Monster. 2003. Those were the filming locations. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Woo! Gonna get warm, get in the car. There it goes, the wind blowing. Ending this video in Lakeland, Florida, just off of I-4, headed way, headed back home to Tampa. We ate at Sunny's, just so you know. Okay, <laughs> who's driving, me? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Drive, you can drive, it doesn't matter. All right, much ahead, I'll drive.